voice of West Texas. Here in Shortcomings, Texas, you know our motto, we may have our shortcomings, but at least we're up front about it. And now here's a gentle reminder. Christmas is coming, it's only two days away. Are you ready? We want all those good boys and girls out there to wake up and finally have exactly what they wish for on Christmas Day in the morning. And I do mean 
forever. <laughs> Goodbye and Merry Christmas. Boy, any boy, and they end up being Lucy. 
And by one couple who wanted a baby, only a baby, they picked Lucy. Lucy's irresistible. Lucy may be irresistible. But if things don't improve around here, the state may not be able to resist closing the doors of the little angel's home forever. I guess it gives me great pain to say this, but I've had rumblings that this may well be the last year for the little angel's home. I have done everything I can do. If the board does not start seeing adoptions, real adoptions, of children that stay adopted, they'll have to close this place down and send these children to other orphanages. Would they all go together at least? I'm afraid not. There's no orphanage with enough room to take all of them. How many adoptions? Would be enough adoptions? I would say five at least to prove that you really are doing your job. Well, that being said, I'll be back tomorrow night for the big party. Yeah, the big, happy, merry party. <laughs> You've once again managed to make our day, Miss Hancock. I do what I can. What cannot be avoided must be dealt with. <laughs> Oh yes, and why wait till after Christmas to share such cheery news? Exactly. Now don't forget the box of decorations out in the hall. I'll bring the rest tomorrow night. But I thought you and the children could begin to decorate a little early. Oh, by all means, let's deck the halls. The soon be empty halls. It's not like I'm upset or anything. This old rundown elephant of a building. It's hot in the summer, cold in the winter, and everyone was a draft, a built-in draft. But they couldn't really close it. They couldn't. And what happened to the children? This is their home. This is our home. But we will not think negative thoughts. There are people out there, nasty people, who are thinking right this very minute about adopting a child. What about children? So we will not be gloomy. We need to shake this off. How about a song? A song? Yes, something cheerful. Cheerful? Something happy. Happy. Well, it's Christmas. What about something with the word Mary in the title, at least? Um, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's it, a, a Happy New Year. We will think about next year and be hoped. That's right, next year.
we might close. Little angels might close, but where would the children go? Where would little bit go? Where would sweetness go? We shouldn't let ourselves get too upset. The children would still be well cared for. They would be sent to various orphanages, bigger ones, across the state of Texas. But we are not going to let that happen. Little bit sweetness. You guys look like angels. Well, duh. That's the part we're playing in the Christmas play. Tomorrow night, the Christmas play means the multitude of angels, you know. It was all in the Bible. My goodness, so what are we thinking? It's time to rehearse the Christmas play so the children can perform tomorrow night. We don't have time to completely solve the problem of the adoptions just now, but we will solve it. <laughs> oh, let's be honest with ourselves, Miss Tiny. We haven't got a prayer of finding a home for five orphans by the first of the year. That's where you're wrong, Miss Irene. Oh, yeah, little bit. You always have a friend. Little bit, you are so right. How could I have forgotten that? Everything else may fade away, yet you always have a prayer. Thank you. Just do it my job. I'm, a, I'm an angel, you know. So get the rest of the kids from rehearsal. Little bit is right. We always have a prayer, and there's no time to spare. Oh, 
I'm playing Macbeth. Who are you? <laughs> uh, um, uh, oh, uh, I'm, I'm Albert Lynch and Montague III. Uh, I'm an actor. Ooh. Ooh. Like in the movie? Do you know Tom Hanks or Mary Pickford? <laughs> Please. I'm a Shakespearean actor. <laughs> I played Hamlet in Shibuken. I played Lear in Schenectady. Uh, um, I did an Ovaltine commercial on the radio. Oh. <laughs> well, you are all most welcome. We will be happy to let you stay here until dusk and fits. When exactly will that be? Uh, it is memory. I'll call the depot and they might send out another bus, but it is getting dark soon and this is West Texas. It's not like those New York City bus lines and there's another one along every minute. Oh, New York, how I miss it. The lights, the sounds, Broadway. You were on Broadway? Twice. <coughs> once for lunch and once for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I did play Richard III in New Jersey. Richard III, you must be making music. Some two other guys. <laughs> Enough, everyone. Yes, <coughs> call the depot and do the best you can. In the meantime, if the passengers from the bus will just follow me and Miss Hattie, we will find you a place to freshen up and rest. And James, if you'd like, I can show you the phone. And then maybe later, I, take it, I can take a look at your axle. <laughs> no, I, I mean the axle. <laughs> I would love to show you my axle. The axle. <laughs> I hope my room has a radio. I'll miss Charlie Parker. I also hope. My room has a balcony with a heavenly view. Oh, child, all rooms have a heavenly view when your eyes are on heaven. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Amen. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs>
we have all been looking in the wrong place for parents. What do you mean? I haven't been looking at all. But don't you see? That's the problem. We don't have to wait for them to come to our door. Think about it. A little bit of sweetness. Us. Who takes best care of you? Who is always doing special things for you? I can name that one. It's Billy. He takes treats for you. He goes to every doll. What comes out to the twin? Mom material. Oh, I can use that and do that one too. Fire pit. That bus driver, Janet. He looked at her like she was nice cream Sunday with fudge sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Albert, you know that not very thing. I 
believe I can help you with that. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, this old thing. It used to be a tablecloth. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh, Miss Lynn, thank goodness you've come. Um, you saved me from a most uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> I was just looking for the kitchen so I could find you and, uh... Me? You're looking for me? Is there somewhere we could talk, Miss Luann? Follow me in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have so many extra hands, I thought we could do a little decorating. I made a few phone calls. Oh, that must be them now. Welcome! We'll make a whole party out of it. Oh, if you would like, I could do a dramatic reading of the gospel according to Matthew. Um, which part? Call it. Amen, sister. Girls, 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 did you hear that? She's a natural. I think she has real potential. I have old girl a bit for her. Okay, do you mean it? I, I could be an amen, sister? Oh, amen, sister! <laughs> Children, do you feel like dancing for our guests? Yes, sure. Our guests are going to have to help us by singing. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, my Lord. And what were those ships on three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what were those ships on three on Christmas Day, my Lord? Oh, thank you, everybody. Now we will see you all here tomorrow night. We 
the chance to talk. I was in a panic. Lucy is certainly a strong-willed child. But she's also a very smart child. I think there might be something to what she said to you today. Maybe she's right. Maybe you're a father material. Well, enough about that. I love getting to know you better. I have no idea you're the director of the Christmas play. I feel an affinity for anyone who's part of a theater. And I admire anyone who's willing to help out in the kitchen. Even someone who's trying to change the subject. <laughs> Miss Luann, I'm not trying to change the subject. I'm trying to avoid the truth. I love. Lucy is a smart child, no doubt about it. And I love being an actor. But sometimes I long to have a home. A kitchen of my own with someone nice to share that kitchen with. Someone like you, Miss Luann. Oh, I wish you'd just call me Miss Luann Albert. Uh, what's in a name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, Luann? There! That's what I mean! You don't have to be a single man for long! Lucy! <laughs> Lucy, you have to stop this! You can't fool me! I saw you on the bus. You are alone and miserable. If you had a wife to travel with, you wouldn't have to be alone ever again. Lucy, it's not that I don't see some sense in what you say, but things don't just happen like that. You can't just simply jump into marriage. Why not? I've been adopted, then unadopted, seven times. So I know all about jumping in and jumping out. Believe me, with the right person, jumping in is easy. Don't you think it would be nice having a wife? Well, I do think having a wife would be nice, so I admit it. And if you have a wife, you might as well have a daughter. But I could never be a father. That's where I draw the line, Lucy. I have no experience as father. Maybe a year or two now, I had some time to think about it, of read a few books. I know nothing about children other than they are rather short and scary, like you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to push you off, but the nice thing about marriage, as I see it, is two people come together and they just have something to teach the other one. I've never been married, but I have 20 children. I know all about children. And you should never put off a chance to be happy. The time to be happy is now. You have to go for it. There's no time to wait. But you can walk. You think for yourself. And heaven knows you can talk. <laughs> At least with a baby, you start young and grow with a child. But to be a father of any child not my own, why, even a baby, I wouldn't know where to start. I have no example to follow. Yes, you do. What do you mean? A long time ago in Bethlehem, a carpenter named Joseph has tried really hard to become a father to a baby not his own. And I think he must have done a really good job. <laughs> yes, but Lucy, remember, that child was special. He was God's child. We all are dead! We are all God's children! <laughs>